Have a seat. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you. Good to be in uh, good to be in classrooms and uh, with live classes going on, right? Yes. So, welcome to Dakshna. It's a it's a pleasure to be with you. And I'm uh, sorry you probably were waiting for a little bit of time, but uh, took a while to get here. So sorry about that. Uh, so anyway, it's great to be in. Uh, RGM Hall, and uh, the backbenchers, how is the AV and everything? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, sounds good. Okay, so uh, we'll, uh, we don't have uh, that much time. We'll uh, maybe go through a few questions and uh, see what you have on your mind and maybe take it from there. So, uh, maybe first question. Hello, sir. I am Ravila Sumar from GNN Jharkhand. And Jay Sharan, my question is, how can India become developed like the USA? Thank you, sir. Okay, please have a seat. So, um, uh, we, we basically get to the, you know, when we look at India and look at other countries, uh, you almost uh, feel that there is something structural uh, maybe it's the population or literacy and so on that uh, makes the country a lot poorer uh, than other countries. Uh, but the reality is a little bit different. So there are four guys who uh, came to Earth at different times who told us how to make a country wealthy. So the first guy was uh, Adam Smith. And the second guy was uh, David Ricardo. And the third guy was uh, Lee Kuan Yew, and the first, fourth guy was Deng Xiaoping. Okay? So, uh, how many of you heard of Adam Smith? Okay, so uh, Adam Smith basically in uh, 1776, he wrote a book called uh, The Wealth of Nations. And uh, David Ricardo was born in 1776. So when this book was written, that's the year he was born. And then in uh, 1799, he figured out something known as comparative advantage. And I'll talk about these other two guys in a little bit of time. But basically, if you... Uh, so, the way to make a country wealthy uh, has been extremely well known for more than 200 years. The formula to make a country wealthy has been around for at least 220 years. And uh, the United States where I live, 
uh, was basically formed around 1790 or so. Uh, that's when they approximately got uh, independence. And the United States uh, uh, completely followed Adam Smith and then later completely followed David Ricardo. Uh, in, in India, we would have been a lot wealthier if uh, these two guys had been followed. But these two guys were not followed. So it's like, you know, if you're a, if you're a physicist or if, you're, if you study gravity, it works a certain way. Whether you believe in gravity or not, it's still going to work that way. So the way to make a country wealthy, there is a particular formula to make it wealthy. And it is a crime not to use that formula. And in India, we have had, from my point of view, our leaders committing crimes since independence. Now, they didn't commit crimes because they were bad people. Uh, they committed crimes, firstly, mostly because they uh, did not understand. Uh, so I'll give you some examples of what they did not understand and what problems it causes and then how we become poor when that happens. So. I grew up, I grew up, uh, I was born in Mumbai and uh, my uh, parents had rented a flat in Mumbai in, I think they rented it in 1962. When they got married, they had rented this two bedroom flat. And uh, at that time, the, the rent on that, on that flat was uh, 150 rupees per month. Okay? So, us time pithara rupee ka value stronger tha, but basically it was 150 rupees per month. And uh, it was a one year, one year lease to rent for one year. After, after one year got over, uh, the landlord wanted to increase the rent. And uh, my father went to court and said that uh, basically we cannot pay higher rent, etc., and the rent should not increase. And the court, the court gave two things to my father. They didn't just give it to my father, they gave it to millions of other people. Number one, the landlord could not evict my family. And number two, could not raise the rent. Okay. Both of these conditions that the courts uh, gave violated Adam Smith and they violated David Ricardo. So what happened is that uh, the landlord cannot do anything. We are paying 150 per month. 1963, also 150 per month, 1964, 1965, the rent is not changing. Eventually, after five, six, seven years, the landlord is paying more tax to the government for the home than the rent he is collecting. So it's negative. He's not, landlord was not even collecting any rent because it's costing him more in taxes. Even then, and every time the landlord is going to the court, the court is saying, rent cannot change. You cannot move these people out. In the United States, if you sign a one-year lease for an apartment and one year is over and a landlord says the rent is now 200 rupees, for example, and you say, I don't want to pay the 200 rupees, the landlord will say, I'm not renewing the lease, the lease is over, please leave. If you do not leave, the landlord will go to the court, the court will issue an eviction order, the police will enforce that eviction order, the police will come and put a notice on your door, 
that in one week, everything in your home will be thrown out and you will be taken out. You have one week to get out. Let's say you keep staying. After seven days, the police will come. They will remove everyone from the home and they will take all the belongings and put it on the street footpath and they tell, they'll tell the person, 24 hours these items will be here. After 24 hours, the garbage truck will come and take everything. So you have one day to take the goods. And the landlord will get complete possession of the house to then rent it to whoever he wants to at whatever rent he wants to, okay? That did not happen in Mumbai. So my, my family lived in this place from 1962 to 1977. 1977, we moved to Delhi. So the way it works in Mumbai and other places is the tenant is like the owner. He cannot be thrown out, okay? And because he cannot be thrown out, uh, let's say, for example, now this, this, uh, up, this apartment became very valuable. In 15 years, it went up a lot in value. At that time, I think it was worth like uh, maybe uh, 10 lakhs. So the, uh, the landlord came to my parents and said, I will give you 8 lakhs. Please leave. So the landlord is willing to give up 80% of what somebody will pay him, because at least he, in that case, he'll get two lakhs. And my family said, no, we need a place to stay. We don't want your eight lakhs. Now, my parents were good people. They were not bad people. So in 1977, when, when they were leaving Mumbai, my mother went to the landlord and gave the keys and said, we are leaving. So the landlord said, how much money do you want? So my mother told him, we don't want any money, which was, nobody does that, right? So the landlord thought, inka to sar phir kya hai? Ke, hum ko chabi de rahe hain, paise bhi nahi le rahe hain. But that was unusual, and most people would not do that. So anyway, in 77, my family left that place, gave the landlord the keys and left. In other places in Mumbai, what has happened is, for example, I had some, I had an aunt. They had rented a, an apartment, I think in 1955 or something, around then. And there was a husband, wife, and there were two kids. Husband had signed the lease. He died around 19, 1965, he passed away. And that did not matter, the rent was frozen and nobody was moving out. Then my aunt, who was really old, she passed away around 2000. So now both of them are dead and 45 years, years have gone by. And again, the rent collecting is very low and it doesn't even cover the expenses and all that. And the landlord is offering more and more money. This property was worth several crores. But so, the laws in India allowed that property to be inherited by the children of these people. Inherited means it's not their property, okay? So the court said, okay, now the children can live there forever, okay? So the children are living there. Then finally, I think just the last four or five years, the landlord paid a massive amount of money, several crores, for the children to move, move out, 80% of what he was going to collect or 90% of what he was going to collect, he paid them. And then he finally got the flat after 60 or 70 years and collected little bit of the money that was left, right? Now, what is the, what is the effect? What is the effect of this type of policy? So the effect of this type of policy is that is anyone going to rent an apartment? Koi kiraye pe dega apartment. 
जब ऐसा सब हो रहा है वो लैंड अपने फ्रेंड से बात कर रहा है डू यू थिंक द लैंड लॉर्ड विल बाय वन मोर फ्लैट एंड रेंट इट आउट और मे बी वाइट गेट टू मोर फ्लैट एंड रेंट इट आउट नो सो वॉट विल हैपन टू द नंबर ऑफ फ्लैट अवेलेबल फॉर रेंट दे विल बी नो फ्लैट अवेलेबल फॉर रेंट राइट बिकॉज he got fooled once doesn't want to keep getting fooled so in the united states what happens is the person is thrown out now usually the person doesn't get thrown out because they know this is going to happen so 99% of cases when the lease ends they just leave 99.99% of cases lease ends they just leave because who is interested in getting embarrassed police aayegi and tumko nikalegi and all that who is interested in all that nobody wants all that to happen right so people and your your belongings you can sell them if they throw them on the street there's no value so in the united states what happens is that there are landlords who collect the rent and they keep building new homes to rent so the supply of homes is very extreme and it is very competitive because landlords are trying to get tenants right and so there is a lot of availability so it stays very competitive in uh, in in india and in mumbai what happened and the same thing happened in delhi and other cities is basically no one's willing to rent anything and all landlords are very miserable that our properties have gone away and so what ends up happening is the cities are not able to create affordable housing for everyone and the what what we what we need for um the so what's happening in the united states is we have something known as free market free market economics which is which is what adam smith was talking about that basically let market forces determine what happens in the housing market okay and when you let market forces determine what happens in the housing market is there are many landlords in the market and there are many tenants in the market and just about the enough number of units will be created so that the supply and demand is met properly but when you create a distortion like this what ends up happening is so here's what the indian government does they say these landlords are villains they are not lending renting their place they have locked their place and kept it vacant so they pass a law which says if your place is vacant it will be taken over so now they are creating even more issues where there now the landlord is not able to rent it because the place will be taken by the tenants never come back to him if he leaves it vacant then again he loses it so now he is bribing government officials or he is putting some nephew in that place or some friend in that place some crazy things are going on and also the other thing that happens is like in mumbai what may have happened is 30% of or 25% of the total flats are actually lying vacant and not available for use for anybody so completely wasted resource and new ones are not being built so we have created a distortion for no reason the these thinking the thinking which led the courts to say let the tenant stay and all that is like they are saying well the tenant may not be able to afford it well you have to let the economy play out the way it does if you don't let the economy play out the way it does you're violating adam smith and wealth goes down now the second thing that they did which was i would say even worse than this is uh, 
the the indian government in 1947 decided that they will have what they call a planned economy okay five year plans planned economy what how the economy will grow and all these things so for example let's take the example of bread you guys are probably too young to know this but from 1947 till at least 1990 there were only two bread companies in india okay so basically for about almost like you can say 45 years or 43 years there were two companies allowed to make bread nobody else was allowed to make bread okay so one company was britannia you know now they they make biscuits i think the second one was modern modern was the name so what the government did they said look we don't want resources being wasted in the country with 100 bread companies we only want two bread companies okay and we are going to tell the bread company how many loaves of bread they can make in a year so these two companies were given a license to produce bread and they were also told every year how much bread to produce and they were not allowed to produce more bread than that so for example they britannia might have been told you can produce 100000 loaves of bread every day for example and delhi mein wo sanction ho gaya then for next year britannia has to go to delhi meet some babu in delhi pay some bribe and next year he will get quota for 120000 loaves okay this type of stuff was happening in the entire economy so there were also only two car companies so there's fiat and there's ambassador and same thing they were the only two companies allowed to manufacture cars and they were told how many cars to manufacture and every year they had to go to delhi okay now you can make 50000 more cars next year you can make 20000 more cars maybe some bribe goes and it increases whatever happens what adam smith said so this is the this is a bigger crime than what happened here so what adam smith said is plan van karne ki koi zarurat nahi hai bread bread cars steel toothpaste whatever you don't need to have government involved at all so what adam what adam smith said is and this is what the united states did you want to produce bread no problem start a company start producing bread 100 companies are producing bread no problem there are too many bread bread companies that's also no problem 10 will go out of business jaane do wo kuch aur karenge and gaadi banani hai in the united states in 1920 there were 300 car companies anyone could start a car company and in india what happened is these two car companies for 50 years they never changed anything in the car because there is no competition now what happens in the car the new models come out they put new features they are advertising trying to get it to sell they don't need to advertise also there's a waiting list to get cars so if you want uh, in 1970 if you want a phone 10 year waiting list if you want a car 3 year waiting list you want a scooter 2 year waiting list there are only two scooter manufacturers same same thing they have done so the the main uh, innovation that adam smith came up with which these guys completely ignored 
he came up with something known as the invisible hand. So Adam Smith said, look, there is a bread manufacturer. This bread manufacturer only cares about himself. He doesn't care about the country. He doesn't care about his consumers. He doesn't care about anything. The only thing he cares about is himself and his family. And what he wants to do is he wants to make a lot of money for himself and his family, right? So what he's going to try to do is make really good bread. Soft bread, brown bread, you know, he might make croissants, he may make many different kinds of bread. So he's trying to find out how can I make bread more better than anyone else so I can charge more and make more money. He doesn't care about the country and he doesn't care about the other bread manufacturers. He doesn't even care about his customers. What he only thing he cares about is that his family should make money. So he's trying to do whatever he can to make money. And there are 100 bread manufacturers trying to do the same thing. So at the end, what ends up happening is, now these, these two bread companies that were there, uh, Britannia and Modern, the bread was okay, but variety bread there was no there was no choice. In uh, 1980, I I moved to Dubai. I finished last two years of high school in Dubai. I went to the supermarket, and there's a whole section for bread, with 50 different kinds of bread and many different companies. I'd never seen that before in India. I just saw two bread is there. Then I took one loaf of bread. It's 10 times softer than anything India has. Because those people are competing really hard, the quality of the bread was 10 times better than Britannia or modern. And if the, if the bread is not being sold fresh and not really good, that bread manufacturer will go out of business. That supermarket will go out of business. And so what Adam Smith said is that the invisible hand, what it does, is it optimizes bread production automatically. There is no babu needed in Delhi. There is no license needed from anyone. You just let everybody, you just have a safety and food safety body which will just make sure that there is nothing going on which will harm the public. Right, you know, Food and Drug Administration just to make sure it is, it is safe. But you don't need to control how much bread is there. The, Idiot Babu in Delhi doesn't know how to do that. And with this invisible hand, what happens is you get a lot of innovation and you get a lot of efficiency. So someone figures out how to make bread much cheaper than anyone else. He will get a lot of market share. And other bread manufacturers will go out of business. But what will end up happening is that you will end up with a lot of efficiency in bread manufacturing. So what happened in, in the United States is, in 1790, there were four million people in the country. Now there are about 330 million. These four million people, the government never told them anything. You want to grow wheat, please grow wheat. You want to grow corn, grow corn. Wheat price is too low, you are not making money, I can't help you, okay? Everything is completely free market. You produce what you want, you manufacture what you want, you sell what you want, you make whatever profit you want, and if it doesn't work and you go bankrupt and your company closes, that's also your problem, okay? That is the engine that creates wealth. Okay, so now, in, 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 in India, so we had this issue with housing messed up. Bread manufacturing messed up. Car manufacturing messed up. In every sector, they put restrictions on who can enter, how many can enter. So every part of the economy is choked. You are violating Adam Smith completely. Now, in the, in the United States, 
there are 330 million people. Out of these 330 million people, 3 million are farmers. Okay? 1%. India is uh, 1.3 billion people. And more than 700 million, more than 700 million, more than 70 crores are farmers. Okay? The US produces more crops, more uh, crops in tons than India. Thirty lakh people are producing more crops than 70 crores. Okay, so 30 lakhs is like if I do, uh, uh, you know, 30 divided by, uh, well, let me just see, it's, so 70 million, 700 million. one out of, let's say, 230. So the, for every 230 farmers in India, the US has one farmer. And the productivity of the American farmer is more than 200 times the productivity of the Indian farmer. Okay? Indian farmer is working very hard. You know, right? It's a, it's a very tough job. How many of you are from farming families? Raise your hand if you're, look, the 65% is sitting right here, right? Your parents work very hard in the farm, right? Why is the output so low? Why is the American farm output so high? And why is the Indian farm output so low? And why is the American farmer so rich? And why is the Indian farmer so poor? The reason is, Abhi dekho, aap sab kisano ko, kisi ne ye samjhaya nahi hai, ke aap ko poor rakha gaya hai. For stupid reasons. You should be as wealthy as the American farmer because you are working as hard as them. Actually, the American farmer doesn't work hard. I'll tell you how they work. They don't work hard. They just make a lot of money without working hard, okay? So, now, India used to have a zamindari system, right? The zamindar owned all the land and then the people working in the field, they had no money, they had no land, they are like slaves. So, that was a bad system. So, India did land reform. And they said ke sab zamindaro ko nikal diya and sara land baant diya. That's, I think that was a good thing. That they gave everybody the land. But after that they did one more thing. They made it really hard to sell the land or to buy the land or to change the land. In the United States, we don't have any restriction. So, if a piece of land is being used for agriculture and someone wants to build a university, the local people will decide whether it makes sense or not and very quickly, if it, if it looks okay, they will approve it. So, the land, land is a factor of production that can move any way it wants to. So, here is what has happened in India. I like these boards going up and down. Do you know whose idea these boards was? 
my idea. <laughs> I forced them to put these boards. Before that, they had stupid boards, so <laughs> the boards have improved. So they hear as I have. Let's say each of the small squares is one field owned by one family, okay? So family A owns this, B owns this, C owns this, etc. And each of those fields is five acres, okay? So panch panch, the zamindar had this whole thing and they threw the zamindar out and they evenly distributed all the land to all these people, okay? And now everyone is farming on small plot of land. Now there's a farmer over here who has figured out a few things that his other farmers have not figured out. He's figured out how to get higher crop yield or to grow some crops that make more money, something he has figured out. So this farmer Q over here, he's making more money than his neighbors, okay? He's doing a little bit better than the neighbors. And he says, Ke, if, I can, if I can double the size of my farm here to make it, you know, this big, like it becomes like this, right? Double then I think I can be more productive, right? So, this change, the government makes it very hard. The government is concerned that ye sab bechare kisano ka zameen chali jayegi aur fir pata nahi kya hoega. And we don't know what will happen. So, for example, in the state of uh, West Bengal, Tata's decided to build a car factory. This happened maybe about 15 years ago. So they identified some land and they said, okay, this land is good to build the factory. That land belonged to, let's say, 100 farmers. Okay? So they met with all the farmers and they said, we will pay you more than the value of your land. Whatever the value is, we'll pay you more than that. But then the government is getting involved, saying, In ki to zameen chali jayegi. So Tata is saying, I'm giving you money. Right? I mean, I'm giving you the value of the land. So government said, no. You give job to each family. One job to each family. So Tata agreed to that also. So they said, okay. If you have certain amount of land, we will e even give 100 jobs. Okay? So they said, you'll get the money, you'll get one member of each family will get a job, which I think is very stupid. They should hire the best people, not give jobs like that. But then there was a Andolan, the communists got involved. They, they did not trust the Tatas. They said, kuch to hera hai. They did a lot of dharnas and all that. So Tatas have already paid for the land. They've already given the money. And after doing all that, they were thrown out. And then our Prime Minister at that time was Chief Minister of, of Gujarat. He told the Tatas, come to Gujarat, I will give you the land for free. So Tatas moved the factory to Gujarat, they built the factory, factory is running. Now, car factory creates a lot of economic activity. Okay, that economic activity could have happened in West Bengal. But instead nothing happened, right? So, this farmer Q, is, he's a smart farmer. He wants to have two and then when his two is doing better, he wants to have three. Then he wants to have four. But nobody allows him to do that. Right? So what happens in the US is as a restriction nahi hai. So basically this whole thing is one farm. In fact, in the US, when I go to Nebraska or Iowa, the farm size is um, 
10,000 acres. 30,000 acres. And you know how many people are working there? 10,000 acres? Five people. Okay? And now you know what they have done? Like when they are uh, planting the seeds. So first they have to plow the land, right? So the plowed land, the combine, now they have, it used to be one farmer in this big combine going through the land up and down, right? Abhi it is zero farmers. So uh, they have put computer in that combine, the big tractor. It's a huge tractor. It goes on both ends. It goes bigger than this classroom. So the computer has a map of that field. And the farmer just programs. Subha, panch minute, usko bol dete hain ki dekho, ye pura field mein jaake plow karna hai. Tum pura plow karke kone mein paak ho jao. Okay? The whole field is plowed. There's nobody in the tractor. Okay? Then when he has to plant the seed again, he sends it. You go automatically plant all the seed and come and park in the corner. Then when the harvest time come, again the harvester goes on its own. Harvest everything and bring it back. All the activities used to take one farmer for each of those activities. They have now taken it down to zero farmers. Or farmer is sitting on picture of the house. And he is very So what happened is that you, I, have, I have many friends in the US who are farmers. They are very wealthy. Okay, they are driving fancy cars, they have big houses, they are very wealthy. And basically what, what, uh, they, what they, they say is they, they look at their uh, farming as a business and let's say some neighboring fla 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 uh, farm comes for sale. They will look at the economics, okay, how much does the guy want to ask, how much can I get for my wheat or my corn, should I buy it, should I not buy it, the government will not bother. Government will say, you have 10,000 acres, you have acres, if the guy wants to sell it, you buy it. So what has, what has happened is, these states like Iowa, Nebraska, Illinois, Iowa, and all these places, they have massive farms, huge farms. I mean, like the farmer cannot even go from one end to the other in one day, the farm is so big. And, um, they, they are using very sophisticated tools. So for example, before the farmer plants his crop in the US, he hedges the whole crop. What he does is, he forward sells the entire output to somebody. So he, say, he plants his crop in May, okay? The corn is gonna be harvested in September, okay? He has already sold the corn in September at a, at a given price. So he already knows what a seed cost is, what the fertilizer cost is. He knows all those costs. So before he even buys the seed or the fertilizer and all that, he has already sold the... The second thing he has done, he has taken crop insurance. So let's say there's a drought and no, no corn is produced the insurance company will pay him for all the corn. So he spends 1% or 2% of his total income to buy crop insurance. He does not care if there's a drought or not. Does the Indian farmer care if there's a drought? Yes. Indian farmer is ruined when there's a drought. Right? American farmer, not even bothered. Insurance company will pay him. Because he has taken 2% of his total income and given it to the insurance company in the beginning. He also has no, he has no price risk. So what happens to the Indian farmer, they produce the crop, then they go to the mandi, right? He doesn't know what price he is going to get before he plants. When he goes to the mandi, that's when he finds out what is the price. What if the mandi price is too low? So. So here's what happens. In the, in the US, the government has some involvement in farming, but not much. Uh, they they ma mainly leave it alone. Now, why is the Indian farmer poor? Let me tell you why the Indian farmer is poor. It's not just for this reason. 
देर आर लॉर्ड ऑफ क्राइम्स बींग डन दिस इज जस्ट मैं आपको बता रहा हूं क्या क्या क्राइम्स हो रहे हैं एंड नो बडी इज डूइंग एनी थिंग अबाउट दीज क्राइम्स सो इन द यू एस वेन द फार्मर प्रोड्यूस इज अ क्रॉप देर इज नो एम एस पी देर इज नो मिनिमम सपोर्ट प्राइस गवर्नमेंट डज नॉट केयर इफ द फार्मर मेक्स नो मनी डज नॉट केयर they think is the farmer's problem he's a business man he needs to figure it out on his own so the farmer has to take care of it himself so in india what is happening is urea is subsidized right and it's subsidized so much that farmers are putting extra urea in the field okay water is subsidized water is coming to the farmers at much lower price electricity is subsidized so basically what the government is doing is saying ye bechare kisan bahut gareeb hain inko madad chahiye hum inko bijli denge pani denge fertilizer denge all at lower price so their cost is low okay it's a big violation so it is violating the invisible hand so what happens is when when the indian farmer produces let's say he produces sugar cane the cost of production is actually lower than it actually should be because there is a subsidy right because he is getting all these subsidies and then so first you are giving subsidies on the input then you are giving msp on the output right so it all looks good right because the government is trying to help the farmer it's trying to reduce the cost and make sure you get a market price make sure you get a good price in the us there is no subsidy for the inputs and there is no minimum support price everything is left to adam smith invisible hand to figure out now here's here's the second thing we get to which is called comparative advantage david ricardo Brazil produces sugarcane. Okay, Brazil is the number one producer of sugarcane in the world, and the Brazilian sugarcane farms are so productive that, with no government subsidy, no nothing, and the quality of the soil and the amount of rainfall they get, all these things, no other country in the world can produce sugarcane. below the price of brazil it is very efficient at producing sugarcane and in india for example after getting all those subsidy subsidies the cost of producing sugarcane in india is about 30% higher than brazil if there was no subsidy it may be 60 70% higher than brazil so the sugarcane farm farmers in uttar pradesh have are voters they have a vote bank right so the government has given them lot of protection so what the government has said is no brazilian sugar is allowed to enter india na rahi ki bans na bajegi bansuri okay so they have told brazil this is a very serious violation this is the reason why just this violation alone is the reason why the indian farmer is so poor so they have said brazil you are great at producing sugarcane that's wonderful it will never come to india <laughs> okay so brazil says okay hum aapke products allow nahi karenge brazil also has put import restrictions on various indian products in retaliation because they are saying you are not allowing free trade to take place so what david what david ricardo said it's a very simple idea he said there is a country a which is great at producing sugar cane and there is a country b now in andhra pradesh a new industry has come up shrimp farming 
आपको पता है ना श्रिम्प क्या है झिंगा ओके श्रिम्प फार्मिंग हैज बिकम अ वेरी बिग इंडस्ट्री इन आंध्र प्रदेश ऑल दीज फार्मर्स हु यूज टू बी राइस फार्मर्स गोइंग ऑन द बाइसिकल नाउ दे हैव बिकम श्रिम्प फार्मर्स ड्राइविंग एस यू वी ओके देर इज नो गवर्नमेंट सब्सिडी फॉर श्रिम्प फार्मिंग सो नन ऑफ द इनपुट कॉस्ट आर subsidized so they the the shrimp farmers in andhra pradesh they buy the shrimp feed they feed the pond they do everything market price they are going in the market and buying at the market price and they are selling the shrimp there is no msp with shrimp they are selling the shrimp at market price full market forces are at work in the shrimp farming business in andhra pradesh it was a very very small industry 15 years ago and like fire it has spread so it used to be that thailand was the place which was the most efficient at shrimp farming but a few farmers in andhra pradesh figured out that andhra pradesh climate soil different parameters actually made it even more efficient than than thailand so a few of them started producing shrimp and they are exporting all over the world when in the us i eat shrimp it has come from andhra pradesh it is exported all over the world that's why those guys are driving suvs they have never gone to the government saying humko msp chahiye wo jaise wo dharne hue the na wo punjab ke farmers ke aise kabhi andhra pradesh mein nahi hua hai because they are already making so much money they don't care they just told the government please stay away we don't want to hear from you we don't need to we'll pay and on top of it india has no tax on agriculture so they are very wealthy they are also not paying any tax legally so now india has a competitive competitive advantage in shrimp farming strong competitive advantage okay and it is selling shrimp all over the world except brazil <laughs> brazil ne bola tumhara shrimp nahi aayega hamara sugar cane nahi jayega to tumhara shrimp kaise aayega okay what david ricardo said is don't mess with the free market don't mess with it if india is great at producing shrimp produce lot of shrimp and sell it to the whole world and if brazil is great at producing sugar produce lot of sugar and sell it to the whole world so what would happen is if country b is great at shrimp farming and country a is great at producing sugar cane what should happen is there should be no restrictions of any kind for them to produce as much as they want and to sell to whoever they want right i mean that's really what should happen they should be allowed to sell to whoever they want and as much as they want no duties no tariffs no nothing if that were to happen the sugar cane farmers in brazil will become very wealthy and the shrimp farmers in india will become very wealthy both will do well okay now what happens is we have those farmers protesting from punjab what are they protesting they are saying they are concerned that msp may go away right should we have msp thoda hesitate kar rahe ho because you have been so brainwashed that msp is very important right the so here's what should happen now no indian prime minister will ever be able to do this that is the sad part because if they do it in two days they'll be shot dead okay what should happen in up with sugarcane production they should go to the up sugarcane farmers and say dear mr farmer we like you a lot you are a good guy you are working hard here's what is going to happen in the next 5 years gradually cutting a little bit every year all the input subsidies are going to go away urea will go up little bit in price every year so in 5 or 7 years urea will be at market price water will be at market price electricity will be at market price all the subsidies are gone and also in the next 5 years gradually the msp will get reduced and eventually in 5 or 7 years the msp will be gone okay and 
they need to do a third thing. The third thing they need to do, they need to tell the family, listen, if when all these adjustments take place, your family income is below 1500 rupees per person, or 1000 rupees per person in your family per month, government will give you the money. So if all these changes hue and you can no longer do, so what will happen if they take all the subsidies away and they allow Brazilian sugarcane to come in, freely come in, what will happen is the sugarcane industry in Uttar Pradesh will disappear, right? When it disappears, the government has already told the people, every family member you have, 1500 rupees per month, I'm going to give you cash. If you are not producing sugar cane, so now what happens? The field is lying empty. The farmer is sitting at home and he's getting 1500 per person. So a farmer may be okay with that. If, if the government gave you that deal, like let's say to your family, that we will subsidies, but we will give you every month. And those, that money will continue, let's say, for 10 years. They tell you, for 10 years, we'll give you this, uh, this money. Now, here's what happens. The farmer in UP is sitting with the land sitting empty. He's getting some money so he can eat and all that, but the land is sitting empty. So he starts thinking. What can I do with my land? So he says, uh, Infosys se ja ke baat karta Maybe Infosys can take my land and put a software building over here, and pay me for the land. So they will start, and the other thing you take away is, make it easy for that land to be used for anything, right? So now what has happened is that eventually what will happen is all those sugarcane farmers will not look for their children to become sugarcane farmers. They will say, I will make a software person. Sugarcane farming is not in the I will make him a doctor, I will make him an engineer, I will make him a scientist, I will do something, something else. Or, you know, let me buy land in Andhra and do sugar, uh, shrimp farming. I will move to Andhra and do shrimp farming. I will go to land and go there. Okay? So they will start the system will start adjusting and what will end up happening is that so India has comparative, comparative advantages in many many areas like shrimp farming is just one area so another thing is let's say diamond cutting you know for jewelry diamond cutting the in the whole world the only place where diamond cutting takes place is Surat in Gujarat they cut all the diamonds in the whole world why do they cut all the diamonds in the whole world? Because nobody else can cut diamonds as well as them. So the father is teaching the son, he's teaching the grandson. They have built a huge industry. So all the diamonds from all over the world come to India. These guys do all the cutting. It pays a lot of money. Then it goes back all over the world. So the government has no subsidy. There is, they are not saying there can only be two diamond cutters, like they said earlier. They, it's like shrimp farming. Anyone can do diamond cutting. Let's look at IT. They say Infosys, Wipro, TCS, etc. When this IT industry grew, the government didn't even, didn't even know that there is an industry called IT industry. And so, what happened is, they didn't even understand this industry. This industry has grown a lot. There is no subsidy. So, IT people can be hired and fired anytime. Uh, all their contracts are with international companies. So, India is sending software and technology all over the world. Just like shrimp farming, just like, so what happens is that when you free up these resources, this number will go down. This number will go down a lot. Because what will happen is the farms will get bigger. Eventually what will happen is, so if you think about it, the U.S. is a zamindari, right? They're all big farms, but it's zamindari without any slaves. There are no workers there, right? They are just, they are just zamindars sitting there and nobody is being asked to work for cheap money or anything like that, so it's, it's working fine. And so if you let the, so in the United States, 
wages and salaries are very high. Many things that China can produce very cheaply, America cannot produce that cheaply. So they say, fine, we will not produce these things. We'll just get it from China, right? And the things that they are like, let's say all the airplanes in the world are only made by two companies, Boeing and Airbus, right? One in Europe and one in the US. So the US of Boeing is selling the whole world in the whole dunya mein planes bech hai. because they are strong at airplane manufacturing. They are very weak at toy manufacturing. So all the toy manufacturing has moved to China. All the airplane manufacturing is sitting in the US and that pays very well. So basically, the combination of, so if we go back here, these two guys were the heroes because Adam Smith said, invisible hand, don't try to plan anything. The individual businessman only cares about his own profit, but by caring about his own profit, he helps society because he produces a good product, like the bread in Dubai was so good. And David Ricardo said comparative advantage, where he said, let Brazil produce sugar cane, let India do shrimp farming, let India do diamond cutting, let India do IT services. And so what would happen is if they allowed if they allowed the Indian economy to freely adjust, then this number will go way down because the farms are going to get a lot bigger. And this time when the farms get bigger, they will not be people working like slaves because they will automate. They will automate like the, like the Americans have automated. Because otherwise, you will not be able to create crops at the right price. American farmers produce wheat at a much lower price than Indian farmers. Canadian farmers produce lentils, dal, all these things much lower price than Indian farmers because those farms are huge and, and they're doing that. So the, the thing is that this, this 70 crores needs to go down to 7 crores and then it needs to go down to seven, 70 lakhs. It needs to go way down. And when those people get freed up, they will go into industries which there is an advantage and it will work. So the, um, the, uh, the important thing, so then let me just get to these last two guys. Lee Kuan Yew. How many people heard of Lee Kuan Yew before? We have a couple of guys. So Lee Kuan Yew was the leader of Singapore. He created Singapore basically. And he understood these two guys really well, okay? And in 1950, the Singapore people were just as poor as India. Singapore had nothing. Singapore ka jo per capita income tha, or India ka jo per, per capita income tha 1950 mein, it was the same. Now, Singapore is very wealthy and India is very poor. And Singapore had no resources. They had no land. It's a very small place. The land was a swamp. Lot of malaria, lot of mosquitoes. There was nothing there. But what he studied very hard is he said, how can, how can Singapore rise? What can be the things that Singapore can do that will be valued by the world? And what he, what he found is Singapore can be a shipping hub. It has become a biggest shipping hub in the world. Logistics hub, manufacturing of high technology products, finance center. So he created a very modern state. The per capita income is almost 50,000. And so it's, uh, it's actually worked out really well, right? I stayed, I stayed in Dubai for three years. Abu Dhabi has a lot of oil. Dubai almost has no oil. So they did not become wealthy because of oil. They almost have no oil. But what they did is they used their location to create a hub that people would come to. They created a very big airport, which is bringing a lot of flights in and out. Very good, very big shipping port. They created infrastructure, which is really good. They put a metro system and road system and all that, where a lot of finance came over there. So they have no agriculture. They have no car manufacturing. They have nothing going on in many other sectors, but it's a wealthy place. And Singapore is a wealthy place. So Lee Kuan Yew figured this out, 
okay, and he built Singapore. And then this guy, Deng Xiaoping, Deng Xiaoping was the leader of China. And now China is a communist country. So they had all the same ideas that India had, okay, all the land should be owned by the government, and everyone should do the farming together, all these communist ideas. And it was a very poor country. So Deng Xiaoping visited Singapore and met with Lee Kuan Yew. So Lee Kuan Yew told him, listen, if you don't allow business people to do what they want to do, you will always be poor. So what he did was, in communist China, he set up these economic zones. He set up like seven, eight economic zones, big areas, where he said in these zones, anyone can do anything they want. And suddenly in those zones, a lot of, like all these Adam Smith, David Ricardo rules, you could apply in those zones. And suddenly in those zones, there was a lot of activity, manufacturing, export, a lot of things started happening. And China started to see that in these zones, the people are becoming wealthy. So then you know what they did in, the, in 1990, they said the whole country is an economic zone. So they, they had these very small places which were these export zones and zone, they made the whole country a zone. And China has grown uh, the per capita income many fold in last, I mean, it left India behind, many fold, it grew about 8% a year for 30 years, the income, so it just went up a lot. And all he did actually, so Deng Xiaoping actually is a very important person to study because he took a system even worse than India. Because it was a completely, India still had some capitalism, it has some business people, had all of that. China had nothing, it was all central government owned, everything. So for example, the, the year they privatized the farms, so farms were collectively owned, they broke up all the farms and gave it to individual ownership and said, tumko jo produce karna karo. Farm production went up 60% in one year. Because now farmers are able to keep what they produce. Earlier what they produced, they would just give to the state. And so it started to uh, increase and become more valuable. So India does not need to be poor. It is poor because those four people were ignored. And how difficult is it? So, ye jo Adam Sip ke jo funde hain, ye to 100 rupay ki book mein mil jayenge. Footpath pe. David Ricardo ka bhi 100 rupay mein mil jayega. 3-400 rupay mein sare funde available hain. So, none of this is really hidden anywhere. And it has not been hidden for more than 200 years. And we have lots of examples of countries that have become very wealthy following this. If you don't follow this, you cannot become wealthy. So our prime minister took a lot of risk with the farm reform. When he was trying to change the Mundi system and the MSP and all that. And finally he had to back off. Right, because there was too much opposition to that. And now I think he will not try to do it again. It is too hard, which is, very, which is very unfortunate. But basically, what they have to do, in my opinion, is they have to supplement that with a transfer payment to individuals, individual farmers, so they don't go below their basic level. And then it can work. So anyway, sorry for the wrong, long answer. Uh, next question. Hello, sir. Good morning. My name is Tejasri. I'm from JNV, Aurangabad, Maharashtra. I'm J.E. aspirant here. My question is, how can girls start their own business? How can she grow her ideas, such as some books? And how did you start? Okay. Who motivate you to become the person you are today? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. I became the person I am today because of Adam Smith and because of David Ricardo. Long live Adam Smith, long live David Ricardo. <laughs> anyway, so are you, are you medical or engineering? 
Engineering, okay. So basically I think that, so what happens is that basically uh, what, I would, what I would suggest to you guys is right now you should not think about starting a business or something like that because I think that you may, you may get confused and you may have difficulty finishing your education, etc. So I think it's more important to make sure that you get a good, good education so you have a baseline, you know, that you can always make sure you have some job or something can, can happen. But let's say, let's say you are um, in the third year of, medic, of engineering, third year, you have like two years to go, one and a half year to go before you finish. Uh, there, is a, there is a book I would like to recommend to you, uh, which, you should, which you should read. Abhi dekho, 2022 mein aap ye test loge. So you should maybe try to read this in 2025. So in 2025, you can read this book. It's, it's called uh, The Origin and Evolution of New Businesses. And this is written by a guy named Amar Bide. Amar, Amar is a IIT Bombay graduate and then he went to Harvard Business School, all that he's, and now actually he's a friend of mine. Uh, but he wrote this book many years ago, but the book may be 20 years old or something. It's a long, very old book, but it's a very well-written book. And what the, what the book does is it uh, chronicles the, the journey of maybe um, 100 different entrepreneurs in different industries. How they got the idea, how they started the business, and what difficulties they faced, and then what happened, right? So instead of just getting one story like me, which is just very little, the book will give you 100 stories for 200 rupees. So very cheap, right? So when third year of internship, you can read the book. And that, that should be okay. And uh, so basically I think uh, the, way, the way Adam Smith's invisible hand works is that <clears throat> someone like me or someone like you who, who wants to start a business, what you will be looking for is what I would call an offering gap there is some product or service that you think can be very successful, but it is not being offered in the market, right? So, like, let's say, for example, in India, for example, let's say a few years back, all the scooters were running on petrol, right? Now there are some scooters which are running on electricity on, you just charge the battery and you run it. So some years back, the first guy may have come up with the idea that they can be an electric scooter. And it's not always the first person who has the idea who could make money, but that's an example of an offering gap, that there should be electric scooters, but there are no electric scooters today, so can I make electric scooters? because the scooter market is so big that if I can make good electric scooters, then I can do well. So when you are in like third year or fourth year or when you start working, the important thing to do is to just always be scanning the horizon to see what possible product or service could be offered but is not offered today, okay? And it can be any kind of thing, it doesn't, doesn't matter. And the, the second thing to keep in mind is that you can 
you can start your business and you should start your business while you have a job. So don't say I will quit my job and then I will do some business because paise aane band ho jayenge. We have to keep the money coming so that there is no problem, right? So when I when I was uh, uh, 22 years old, I just I just finished uh, I just finished engineering. I just started working, and uh, two other friends of mine had an uh, idea for a company based on some software tools. One of one of the guys had built some software tools, but he didn't know how to market it or sell it or anything. He just said, "Many tools banai hai." And the other two of us thought that, well, maybe we can help create a company and, you know, try to sell this and, you know, we can try to make this work. So, the three of us formed a company and we used to meet on weekends. So, we all had jobs. We used to meet on weekends and evenings to do our planning and whatever, etc. And I think uh, it didn't cost much. I think we must have, each person must have spent... Uh, like 10, 20,000 rupees, just few things we were thinking about. But then what happened is in a few months it fizzled out. The, we really could not get any customers interested and uh, nothing was really happening and then the team just kind of went away. But I learned a few things about how this can work. So there was a small amount of money that was lost but I had a job so it was okay. Then, uh, then about uh, three years later, I had another idea for another company. And this time I did it on my own. I didn't have other people with me. And in 10 months uh, after I had the idea, I got the first clients. So some revenue started coming and some things started happening. And then about two, three months after that, I quit my job because there was enough uh, activity and, and uh, traction. And that company did, did very well. So basically what I did is I, I kept my job and I kept looking for what can work. And finally I found this offering gap and it worked. So when you read this book, you will see that a lot of people are talking about that. And uh, if you keep your job, you can keep trying 100 times, right? First one doesn't work, it doesn't matter because you still have your job, you still have money coming, no problem then you can try again. So let's say for example, you are making seven, eight lakhs a year. Up her sal, eight lakh, one or two lakhs you can spend on your startup. You'll still be okay. And if it works, it's okay. It doesn't work, it's okay. Next day you again have that money. You can keep doing that. And if it works, then it can, it can work out really well. So uh, that's what I would, I would recommend. Uh, next question. Hi, good morning, sir. Myself Suraj Panda from JNV Ganjam, Odisha. I want to ask you that after fulfilling your financial goal, what was your procedure to start an organization like Dakshana? Even I want to start an organization for orphans. Please guide me how can I make this possible? Thank you, sir. Okay, that's a very good idea. I think good to think about helping society. So, The simplest thing you guys can do, and you can start doing this right after you start IIT or medical school or whatever, is in your villages, there's a lot of problems with education. The school is very, uh, very bad or the teachers are there or not there or the classroom is not that good. There are a lot of problems with education. So, the simplest thing you can do is just identify one or two kids and start helping them. You can help them with math or science or whatever to just improve them. And if you have more time and more money, you could do that for one whole class. Like you can, you can do a summer camp where you can teach them some math or something, help them do something. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, don't think about doing something at Dakshana scale. Dakshana scale will take long time, right? You should think about doing something which is easy and quick and something that you can do without any money. The main, uh, 
the main uh, skill you have is you have some skills and you have some time. So you can spend your time and your skills to help some people, right? Like let's say like what uh, one of the things Dakshana is doing in this Kadus village is we help the village kids prepare for the JNVST, right? And last few years, two kids from this village have gone to JNV. And before we started doing that, zero. Nobody went from here, right? So we just, we didn't spend much money. We just have a teacher teaching a few kids uh, for some time. And now two kids are going. Now we are increasing it to make it a little broader. Maybe we can make it three, four kids, right? So it's, uh, helping the community. And if we are lucky, those kids will come to Dakshana as Dakshana scholars. We will have to see. जब वो टेंथ में आएंगे हमारा सिलेक्शन टेस्ट लेंगे फिर देखेंगे क्या होता है एंड मे बी दे कैन कम टू दक्षिणा वैली विल सी देन देयर पेरेंट्स विल बी राइट हियर एंड दे कैन बी लिविंग राइट हियर इट विल बी प्रेटी कूल फॉर देम सो सो वील वील सी बट बॉटम लाइन इज आई थिंक दैट लाइक यू नो गांधी यूज टू से बी द चेंज यू विश टू सी सो वी ऑलवेज से ये रोड खराब है ये स्कूल खराब है ये टीचर खराब है यू नो डोंट से दैट इफ यू फाइंड दैट द रोड इज बैड फिक्स द रोड एंड इफ यू फाइंड द स्कूल इज बैड फिक्स द स्कूल सो बी द चेंज बी द चेंज दैट यू वांट टू सी एंड एंड बेसिकली यू कैन डू इट एट अ वेरी स्मॉल स्केल इवन वेन यू आर इन आई आई इवन बिफोर यू स्टार्ट अर्निंग मनी यू कैन डू इट बिकॉज नन ऑफ दीज थिंग्स रियली टेक मनी दे टेक एफर्ट and time but they don't take money so i think i think with that uh, i will uh, move on i think we are probably running behind schedule yahan par sab army navy wale jagah chala rahe hain unko time ki bahut chinta hoti hai did you see all those people in the army fatigues running around for security so they want everything to be on time so with that i think we will uh, proceed and i think they are going to give me a cricket bat <laughs> little later and uh, abhi 40 saal se cricket bat dekha nahi hai <laughs> 40 saal ho gaye hain lekin 40 saal pehle batting karte the to abhi dekhenge bat utha sakte hain ki nahi <laughs> right now i am in one piece we'll see if i am still in one piece that Amit Devedi is saying he is going to bowl some bouncers <laughs> and some yorkers. So, we have also said two or three balls will be thrown. Let's see what happens. Now, we talked about comparative advantage. It may just be that his calling in life to be a cricketer, and my calling in life is to give speeches. But we will find out. So, thank you. Anyway, it was fun talking to you. Thank you. Okay. Hikayat 